done. He let off Nelson from while Floyd Mayweather was never undisputed once, Terence Crawford became the first boxer in the four belt era to become undisputed in two weight classes. The greatest of all time in the sport of boxing is a topic that sparks crazy debates every time it's discussed. Crawford's taking it up the gears. Nice. Oh, what a from Terence While a good number of professionals point to Muhammad Ali as the best fit, modern boxers like Floyd Mayweather have firmly fixed themselves in this conversation. With the hook, which makes it much more dangerous. Hard right hand. But if there's an active boxer who has the records and resume to get into the GOAT debate, it's none other than Terence Crawford. With his career still on, he's got so much more to prove, that's if he's still got any more naysayers. But if at all, here are 11 times Terence Crawford proved he's the real GOAT of boxing. Bud Crawford made his welterweight debut against a man who had just survived a car accident involving three cars, however. While he could survive a car crash, Jeff Horn couldn't survive Crawford's punches. Mr. Horn, Mr. Crawford, gentlemen, let's do this. Gets out just far enough and he tried to count. It was an emphatic performance that brought him a comparison with Sugar Ray Leonard from Bob Arum. Crawford became a three-weight world champion in front of 8,112 fans in attendance after he eventually stopped Horn via TKO in round nine. Just like there. Just like that with his head. At the time of the stoppage, all three judges had Crawford winning all the previous rounds. Horn lacked defense but kept coming forward, trying to look for an opening. Horn made the opening two rounds the most competitive with his aggressive style, but Crawford adapted and remained the busier fighter throughout, landing the most telling shots of the bout. Hands. Horn was eventually dropped for the first time in round nine with an overhand left. After he got back up, Crawford landed a series of hard shots that caused referee Robert Byrd to stop the fight. The official time of the stoppage was two minutes and 33 seconds. After the bout, Crawford spoke about his welterweight debut. According to CompuBox stats, Crawford landed 155 of 367 punches thrown. For that. Against Pacquiao. And with oh, this skill level, free, you're you seeing with, with Bud Crawford, now you see what? This included 47 power shots landed over the final two rounds. Horn, on the other hand, landed just 58 of 257 punches thrown. After the bout, Crawford spoke about his welterweight debut. Like I told you all before, I'm strong. I was way stronger than him. You all kept telling me how strong he was, so I had to go and show you. I just had to get in the ring and prove it. You saw what I did there. My power carried up, my physicality. Now I want all the champions at welterweight. And the next fight he got at welterweight was his first defense at the division. And he really did show he was ready for the best champions. Really, all his opponent needed to lose honorably was 18 more seconds of stability. Sadly, that was too much for Jose Benavidez to give at the time, as he was dropped with 18 seconds to go in the 12th round. In front of 13,323 in attendance, Crawford came on strong in the final round to score a 12th round KO win to retain his WBO welterweight title. He's never fought the one of the, best. the fight was halted at 2 minutes and 42 seconds. Crawford used an in-and-out style of fighting to land his shots and then got away before Benavidez could hit him. Towards the end of round 12, Crawford knocked down Benavidez, who fought with an injured knee with a left-right combination, the final punch being a right uppercut. Pound for pound fighter in the world, that's Terrence plus Crawford. Closer to him. So, to him. And for that right hand. After Benavidez got back to his feet, Crawford landed a flurry of punches until referee Celestino Ruiz stepped in. Crawford landed head and body combinations earlier in the fight, which forced Benavidez to take a step back. At the time of stoppage, Crawford was ahead 110-99, 108-101, and 107-102 on all three judges' scorecards. According to CompuBox, Crawford landed 186 of 579 punches thrown, and Benavidez landed 92 of his 501 throws. Benavidez landed eight punches per round. Crawford credited the body shots, saying, 
That takes something out of you every time. That's what slowed him down. You could tell every time he was shaking his head. I knew it would take its toll in the later rounds. Benavidez landed eight punches per round. CompuBox historical showed that Crawford's previous 10 opponents landed only seven per round. This fight was Crawford's biggest victory at light welterweight. And while the records were set, it was the major time he made his name an unforgettable one in boxing's history books. The projected unification of every major world title in boxing WBA, WBC, IBF, WBO will determine the light welterweight division's first undisputed champion since Kostya Titsu in 2004 and the first time all the aforementioned titles have been at stake in a single fight since Bernard Hopkins vs. Jermaine Taylor in 2005. In front of a home crowd of 12,121, Crawford became the undisputed champion at light welterweight after not Knocking out Ndongo in round three. The final punch was a left hook to the right side of the body, which immediately dropped Ndongo. Referee Jack Rice counted to 10 and promptly called an end after one minute and 38 seconds. Ndongo also touched the canvas during round one, but the referee ruled it a slip. Additionally, Ndongo was knocked down and received a count after a left from Crawford during round two. Following the fight, Ndongo stated, when he hit me like that, my mind was gone about Crawford's body shot. The undefeated world champion Andre Ward once said that Crawford's mentality was what distinguished him from several fighters of his generation. And there was no better match he proved than his fight against Kavaliauskas, where he came back from what almost seemed like a first career knockdown to finish off his opponent. Having called for the opportunity since November 2016, Egedijus Kavaliauskas eventually faced Crawford on December 14, 2019. Early in the fight, Crawford appeared to have been knocked down. However, it was not ruled a knockdown. After a close first half of the fight, eventually, Crawford won by stoppage in the ninth. After dropping the Lithuanian in the seventh round with an overhand right, and twice further in the ninth with explosive punches, the referee intervened to save Kavaliauska's further punishment. The next was even more tragic. It took both the referee and his corner to save him from Bud. Should Amir Khan have known he was about to become a slaughtered ram for the GOAT, he'd have continued his negotiations with Kell Brooks, but rather than see danger in Terence Crawford, he saw a huge payday and a title shot. Well, his sight couldn't take him so far as he soon quit. The match took place on April 20th, 2019. Crawford knocked down Khan two minutes into the first round with a sharp right hand, followed by a left hook, and came close to a second knockdown, with Khan seemingly being saved by the bell. Despite making adjustments in rounds two and three, Khan was easily outboxed by the sharper and faster Crawford. The champion switched to southpaw in round four and increased the pressure on Khan. 40 seconds into round six, Crawford hit Khan with an accidental low blow. Despite being given five minutes by referee David Fields to recover, Khan's trainer Virgil Hunter informed the referee that Khan would not be able to continue, giving Crawford the win via TKO. Before the stoppage, Crawford led on the scorecards by 50-44 and 49-45 twice. According to CompuBox stats, Crawford landed 88 of his 211 punches, while Khan landed 44 of his 182 punches. At the post-fight press conference, Crawford accused Khan of quitting in the fight, which Khan denied. And with what Crawford did this time, it was like he had a personal issue with the Kell Brooks versus Amir Khan fixture, as he soon jumped to Brooks after dealing with Khan. Khan and Brooks both met Crawford, and he taught them and their fans lessons. More importantly, he proved why he was worthy of being talked about as the greatest ever. Crawford entered the fight as a significant favorite, with most odds makers having him as a minus 1,439 favorite. Crawford won the fight by a fourth round technical knockout, stopping the former IBF titleist at the 114 minute mark. Yeah, 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 
He outlanded Brook 36 to 26 in total punches landed and 20 to 12 in power punches landed. Brook was leading on the scorecards at the time of the stoppage, with two judges having the fight 29-28 in his favor, while the third judge awarded the same scorecard to Crawford. The fight, which was broadcast by ESPN, draw an average audience of 2,029 viewers and attracted a peak audience of 2 million. Crawford earned $3 million for the bout, a 60% split of the purse. You're definitely used to boxers knocking themselves out and breaking each other's jaw. But Terence Crawford took it personally against Diaz when he blinded his two eyes. Oh, good shot. By Hard right hand by Crawford. Wow. Counter with a straight left, followed by a beautiful right hook, and because he's so tight. In front of a crowd of 8,026, Crawford retained his world titles after Diaz's trainer, Joel Diaz, stopped the fight after round 10. Towards the end, Diaz did close to nothing, leaning against the ropes. This was mostly due to his vision, as his right eye was nearly closed and his left eye was also badly swollen. Crawford used his jab for most of the fight and used it to control the pace and help him move around the ring in his southpaw stance. Joel Diaz said in the post-fight interview that he had pulled his fighter out because he was taking too much punishment. And um, I would say for people to, oh, good left hand from Crawford. He has in trouble again. Hello, Triple G, such an enormously... Also in the post-fight interview, Crawford said, it's not up to me, but everybody wants to know who's the next guy that Terrence Crawford wants to fight. I'll fight anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. According to CompuBox punch stats, Crawford landed 193 of his 520 punches thrown. In that figure, he landed 59.1% of his power punches. Oh, good shot by Crawford. Oh, oh, oh. Diaz family, yeah, as they stand at ringside. Diaz landed 69 of 346. At the time of stoppage, judges Glenn Feldman and Steve Weisfeld scored the bout 190 and Judge Julie Letterman scored it 99-91, all in favor of Crawford. This fight was Crawford's light welterweight debut, and this was where he proved he wasn't just a world champion, but a multi-divisional world champion. <laughs> Meantime, just to let him know I can hit you when I get ready. And on March 6, 2015, ESPN reported that Crawford would debut as a light welterweight, challenging for the vacant WBO title at the College Park Center in Arlington, Texas, against 25-year-old Thomas Dulormi on April 18th. Pushing Crawford on the way in, Crawford switched to southpaw. So he may be starting to walk Dulorme heads. It does. At the press conference, Crawford told Dulorme, Come prepared because I am going to be ready. The fans should expect a spectacular victory. This is my second world title at a different weight, and I am really going to be up for it. I will be prepared. I am always ready and prepared for any fight. The fight was stopped after Dulorme was knocked down three times in the sixth round, granting Crawford a TKO victory and the WBO title. Dulorme started off aggressive, but was unable to land much as Crawford remained defensive. Referee Rafael Ramos stopped the fight at 1 minute 51 seconds of the round. The fight averaged 1.4 million viewers on HBO till date. This remains one of Terence Crawford's biggest wins. And it wasn't only because of the way he won the fight, but the kind of opponent he defeated as well. There's a moment of distress. Uh, so, and this is one thing. <laughs> Sean Porter versus Terence Crawford was more than a mandatory fight. It was a fight of legacies. On July 22, 2021, the WBO ordered that Crawford defend his welterweight title against the number two ranked WBO welterweight contender Sean Porter. The former two-time welterweight title holder was seen as the biggest challenge in Crawford's career up to that point, with ESPN describing Porter as a quantum leap in competition. On fight night, Crawford showcased his switch hitting ability, fighting in both the orthodox and southpaw stances. Both men were cut from accidental head clashes. In the 10th round, Crawford caught Porter coming in with a well-timed left uppercut, sending the latter to the canvas. Crawford scored another knockdown shortly after, prompting Porter's corner to throw in the towel, handing Crawford a 10th round technical knockout victory. Crawford outlanded Porter in punches with 98 strikes to 79, although Porter had landed more power punches, 67 to Crawford's 65. 
Crawford was leading on the judges' scorecards at the time of the stoppage, with scores of 86-85, 86-85, and 87-84. According to ESPN reports, Crawford earned upward of $6 million for the bout, a 60% split of the total fight purse. During his post-fight interview, Crawford announced his split with promoter Bob Arum and departure from top rank, opting instead to test free agency. Recently, Crawford complained of not getting the accolades he deserved for defeating this fighter. However, it was a different story for Jaron Ennis, who was lauded for a remarkable technical knockout win. Right on the button. He exposed that maybe weren't as good as they were supposed to be. Alan Ennis was able to come over the top. On October 21, 2022, Crawford was announced to make the sixth defense of his World Boxing Organization Welterweight Championship against top contender David Avanesian on December at the CHI Health Center in Omaha, Nebraska that will headline a BLK Prime Boxing PPV. In the fight, it was a pretty easy job for Terence Crawford as the fight could hardly get to the second half before the world champion ended his opponent. Avanesian came to fight, which even the bout's detractors knew he would, but once Crawford really flipped the switch in round six and started sitting down on shots, he was out of his depth, which is also what the bout's detractors expected. Throwing in the distance with his jab. And just, Avanesian is the kind of guy who exposes those fake problems. His counterpunch ability, he's letting the fight come to him and breaking down David Avanesian. He ain't in the A class. Avanesian did have some success, but in the moment starting in about round four when Crawford would turn up the heat even a bit, his forward pressure saw him stuck in the mud and at the mercy of Crawford's superior speed and shot selection. The knockout was a wicked shot, a right hook that came at the end of a combination and put Avanesian flat out on the canvas. There was no getting up there. He did eventually come to and appeared to be okay. But again, it keeps Crawford working. He keeps pushing and looking to change his look because he got the ring cut off on him. Good body shot. Uppercut. I was just warming up in the earlier rounds, Crawford said. I started picking up the pace, planting my feet, and I caught him with a hook. We knew what he was going to bring to the table. We knew he was going to go back and forth between orthodox and southpaw. We knew he was going to counter and pressure me. Asked if Errol Spence Jr. would be next, Crawford only said, I'm a free agent. This was a one-fight deal. Hopefully these big fights will come about in the near future. And really, Errol Spence Jr. did come next. It isn't only the last on the list, it was his last fight at the welterweight division and the biggest win of his career so far. The win sealed his name in history books and gave him the victorious hammer to smash several records. Finally, on May 25, 2023, it was confirmed that Crawford would fight Errol Spence Jr. for the undisputed welterweight titles on July 29, 2023 at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. In front of a sold-out crowd of 19,990, Crawford dominated and won the fight by a ninth-round technical knockout and became the first undisputed welterweight champion since 2006 and the first male boxer in the four-belt era to claim undisputed championship status in two weight divisions. The knockout victory marked Crawford's 11th consecutive finish, with nine of them now coming in the sixth round or later. This, however, was the most impressive of them all, as Crawford put on a boxing masterclass to practically dominate the fight from the moment he dropped Spence in the second round. Junior's era, or will it be Terrence Bud Crawford? That was an unfamiliar position for Spence, who had not previously been dropped once in his accomplished career. By the end of the fight, he had gone down three separate times, a similar story as Devin the Dream Haney, who was dropped thrice en route to the very first loss of his career. Crawford finished the fight landing a stunning 60% of his power shots and 42% of his jabs. His 87 landed jabs were the most by a Spence opponent. The fight opened with Spence dictating terms and pressuring early, while Crawford cautiously and cleverly sat back, picking his moments to counter like he did late in the first round. While there were no major moments for either fighter, Spence overreached on one occasion, and Crawford was quick to counter with a strong left hand. Him, I, that's a dude I need to fight maybe after the rematch. It was just a glimpse of the kind of chess match that was expected in the early rounds, with Crawford known as more of an intentional slow starter and Spence likelier to try to set the pace. Spence was able to do just that some more in the second with a combination of his movement, consistent jab, and relentless pressure causing problems. 
but a straight left power jab from Crawford saw Spence suddenly drop for the first time in his career in the final moments of the second round. There's a big left by Crawford, backing up Spence, and digging to the body, Spence is hurt. Spence is hurt, so Floyd Money Mayweather tells me he's stumbling in the Crawford's power started to really tell in the fourth round as a big overhand left and series of brutal jabs landed and hurt Spence, continuing an incredible start for the 35-year-old. That carried over into the fifth, too, with Crawford once again backing Spence up with his accuracy, speed, and textbook counter-punching. In the end, it was a matter of when and not if the fight would end, with Crawford dropping Spence another two times before sealing a TKO victory in the ninth round. I only dreamed of being a world champion. I'm an overachiever. Nobody believed in me when I was coming up, but I made everyone a believer, Crawford said post-fight. Because he's from a litany of angles, and here comes Spence though as Crawford, and down goes Spence for the... I want to thank Spence and his team. Like I told him, without him none of this would be possible for me here tonight, he added. It means everything because of who I took the belts from. They tried to blackball me, they kept me out, they talked bad about me, they said I wasn't good enough, I couldn't beat these top welterweights, I just kept my head to the sky. I just kept praying to God that I could get the opportunity to show the world how great Terence Crawford is, and tonight I believe I showed how great I am. Crawford certainly showed how great his jab is, with Mike Tyson describing it as a battering ram that continued to connect and pressure Spence back throughout the fight. He's a tremendous talent. He's got a great jab, Crawford added of Spence. And that's all for now. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, peace out.